Tasty Techniques. I'm Jonathan, and today I'm going to show you how to make another tasty meal without the use of a recipe. Now, I know you've watched my first episode where I made a chicken and a bunch of rice. If you haven't, go ahead and pop over to my channel and check it out now. I'll wait here. Now, making a whole chicken in my house is a little tricky because my wife only eats the white meat, leaving me the legs and thighs, which is fine because now I'm going to show you how to make a highly customizable fried rice dish using the aforementioned legs and thighs. Fried rice is a dish that can be referred to as refrigerator velcro, simply because any sort of leftovers you have in your fridge can get tossed right in and probably be pretty dang good. But today, I'm going to work with diced onion, diced carrots, sliced mushrooms, and sliced scallions. There are some more ingredients in this dish, but for now, we're just going to deal with the vegetation and I'm going to show you some knife cuts. And please, make sure you use a sharp knife. I've seen some bad things happen when people use a dull knife. Let's deal with the onion first. Now the fastest way to clean this guy up is to chop off the top, chop off the bottom, leaving some of the root end intact, chop it in half from top to bottom, and then peel away the outer layer. Now that the onion's all cleaned up, I've put it on my board with the root end facing away from me. I'm going to make several vertical cuts through the face of the onion. Don't worry, you're not going to hurt its feelings. But when you do this, you want to make sure you don't cut all the way through the root because we want the slices intact. Once your vertical cuts are done, we're going to make one horizontal cut right in the middle of the onion. And this is going to create a grid, so when we chop through it, it's going to create our nice medium dice. And please watch out for your thumb. You don't want that included in your onion. Now with our onion grid in place, all we have to do is chop right through. Cool, now we have diced onion. Go ahead and set that aside. I'm going to put mine on a paper plate. Don't judge me, I just don't like doing dishes. Uh, but let's get to work on some mushrooms. Now for the mushrooms, I've got these baby portobello mushrooms. They're also called creminis, and they're really tasty. Uh, but you can use any sort of mushroom that you have laying around or any that you get to the store. I got these because they were on sale, but white button is usually my mushroom of choice for this. But you're also going to want to rinse them off really well. They grow in dirt, so they're probably pretty filthy. While you're rinsing your mushrooms, don't worry about that old myth about getting them waterlogged from all the running water. We're going to cook out the moisture anyway, so just rinse them and make sure that they're clean because you don't want to chomp down on some dirt. Now that you've given your mushrooms the old scrub-a-dub, it's time to take out the stems. And whatever you do with them is up to you. You can freeze them and save them for stock, you can chop them up and put them in the fried rice, or you can throw them out. It doesn't matter to me, I'm not going to get my feelings hurt one way or the other. Now place your mushrooms on your cutting board so that the rounded part is facing up so it's very stable on your board. And now, using our sharp chef knife, we're going to make a slicing action forward and down. That two directional angle is going to make going through it a lot easier. And you also want to make sure you keep your fingers out of the way so you don't, of course, end up with fingers in your mushrooms. Those slices of mushroom are going on the plate with my onion. Now that the onions and mushrooms have been dealt with, it's time to move on to the carrots. Now these can be a little bit more tricky since they're round and they tend to wobble around the board, but I'm going to show you how to deal with that. If you wash the outside of your carrots really well, you don't have to peel them. But I've peeled mine because that's what I prefer to do. Now I'm going to chop them in manageable size pieces and show you how to deal with it now. After cutting your carrot into a more manageable size, the next step is to make it more stable. So you're going to want to cut off a thin sliver uh, from one side of the carrot to make a flat edge. You're going to place that on the board so this way your carrot doesn't go wobbling around. And then after that, uh, well just come here I'll show you. The first thing we're going to do now that our carrot is stable is make vertical cuts down the length of the carrot. And now we're going to cut those into matchsticks. Now that we have our matchsticks, we're just going to cut through one last time to make little squares. Don't worry if it's not perfect, it's all going to get eaten anyway. Onions, mushrooms, carrots, all done. Time to move on to the scallions. 
This is really simple and it's just a slice on the diagonal called a bias. Now that the hardest part is done, it's time to assemble the rest of the ingredients. Now, customization is key here, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. But what I have for today is some olive oil, roasted chili oil, rice wine vinegar, and soy sauce. Any of these can pretty much be swapped out or changed if you need to. Um, it's completely up to you. But if you do use soy sauce, I recommend you use low sodium. I don't have it because I don't. But if you do, I recommend that. Also, you want to make sure you do not salt your dish until it's all done and you taste it because soy is basically all salt. Um, but if you don't have these, if you don't have the, the chili oil, maybe some red pepper flake, that's really good. Um, it's also really nice if you threw in some minced garlic as well. Now that your <clears throat> mise en place is all together, it's all downhill from here and it's going to be a lot of fun. First step in actual cooking is we're going to add some of the oil to my largest nonstick pan, we're going to turn it on high, and once it starts to shimmer, well, I'll tell you what to do then. My oil has started to shimmer, which means it's ready to go. We're going to toss in the carrots first because they take the longest to cook. As soon as the carrots go in, we're going to turn the heat down a little bit because we don't want too much browning as everything goes in. Now, the carrots are going to take the longest to cook, but that doesn't mean it's going to take a long time. So after it's been in for about 60 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, just so it's a little bit soft, we're going to toss in the onions, and then shortly after that, the mushrooms. Alright, so my mushrooms, my onions, and my carrots are all in the pan, and I've actually increased my heat a little bit, because the mushrooms have a lot of moisture in them by nature and they're going to start to shrink. We need that moisture to evaporate. So they may be large going into the pan, but they are going to shrink, so don't worry. We're just going to let this cook down until it's done, maybe about four or five minutes at most. I've noticed things are getting a little too brown in my pan, especially the carrots, so I've backed down on the heat a little bit. Don't be afraid to do that if you have to. The name of the game here is just try to get everything cooked as nicely as possible. Now it's been about a minute, maybe 90 seconds. I'm also going to toss in my chicken. The chicken's already cooked, so all I'm trying to do is reheat it uh, right before we add the rice. My chicken's been in for about a minute. Now this would be the time where a lot of people drop in a chicken egg and scramble it up and have a scrambled egg in with their fried rice. I'm going to opt out of that because I don't really care for it all the time, but I am going to add in my rice right now. After you dump the rice in, go ahead and smooth it out and try to take out as much of the clumps as possible. Uh, we're also going to increase the heat to high because we are frying here. This is fried rice after all. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of popping and everything. That's okay. You'll want to stir often, but not too often because you want the rice to have good contact with the sides and the bottom of the pan. Wow, it's smelling so good in here, and it should be at your house right now too. Uh, but it's time to add some of those optional ingredients that I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and toss in some of my rice wine vinegar, my soy sauce, and my roasted chili oil. Alright, it's been about two minutes since I added in the, the last edition uh, liquid ingredients there at the end. If I had some sesame oil, that'd be really good right now. If you have it, feel free to toss it in, it'd be really good. I just don't have any. Uh, but now I'm just going to go ahead and plate it up. Oh man, it smells good, it looks good, we're ready to... The scallions! Bang. Now let's eat. As always, I want to thank you for stopping in my kitchen today. Check out my blog for any special commentary that I might have about today's episode, and I'll see you next week.